Yeah, here we are at Lapa Manufacturing. Today we're going to do uh, a curing burn for a new sauna stove. Uh, you can see we have a four foot section of stove pipe on here with an open ended cap on the top. We recommend at least three feet. We also recommend that you do this curing burn outside. It releases a lot of toxins and uh, chemicals from the painting process. Uh, it's not toxic, but it's highly, <laughs> it has a strong odor to it. So yeah, we recommend you doing this outside. Uh, you might hear some snapping, crackling, popping when it's uh, going, but this is totally normal. It's just stress relieving. Uh, thank you. Operating your Kuma wood burning sauna stove. On your sauna stove, you're gonna see a box here. This box is called your carburetor. We refer to it as the main air. So you're gonna have a shaft or a lever. This controls a flap, allowing air into your stove, okay? So all the way up means your flap is all the way open. So you have maximum air coming into your stove for essentially your, your, your startup fire, your burn. So after you get your burn going, after your fire is going, you need to reduce reduce the draft lowering your lever so <clears throat> this will depend on where you're going to burn at the stove your lever well in full operation should never be all the way open you shouldn't have this all the way open because what happens is is all you're doing is shooting a bunch of air into the stove and you're just overheating that fire and you're not getting the optimum burn out of the stove so what you're going to do well when you start this when you start the stove up you're gonna open open your lever, lifting it all the way up. That's gonna give you maximum flow. You're gonna start your fire. <clears throat> Once your fire gets going, probably about five to 15 minutes, what you're gonna do is you're going to reduce. So you're gonna lower your lever, lower your lever. And that's actually one, it's gonna give you a better temperature out of the stove because you're not just allowing all of those gases and, and, and all that smoke to just exit out of the top of the stove. So you're gonna get a better optimum burn and then you don't risk overheating the stove. So when you're starting your Kumasana stove, either for the first time or during operation, one trick that we use is you go ahead and you open your ash pan door up and you can just open it. I wouldn't pull your ash pan door out. What this will do is it'll increase the draft into the stove. Now, very, very important. You don't wanna leave this door open any longer than you need to. And what I mean by that is once you have flames, once your material inside your stove is on fire, you need to shut this door. If you leave this open too long, you will create way too much draft in your stove and you could potentially damage the stove. So during the first firing process of your stove, you're going to use a sequence of three burns. And the point of this is so you start small and you end big. So you wanna start with a small pile of wood your first burn so this would be burn number one and then number two and number three and when you're doing this you can use uh paper uh here in tower minnesota we have a lot of birch so i like to use birch bark it works really well uh, for starting fires the purpose of using three fires to cure your stove you don't want to start with number three because what's happening is you're you're creating a super super hot fire inside that stove. So you're not allowing the steel to stress release slowly. So you wanna do that over a three step process. So start small, go big. So when you're starting your Kuma sauna stove for the first time, after you've gotten your fire brick and your fire grate inside, what you're gonna do is go ahead and open your lever all the way top. Again, this allows air to flow through into the fire chamber. You're gonna go ahead and open your ash pan door. Again, this is very time sensitive. So I'm just gonna open it a little bit. Just pull it out just a hair, just so it's open. You don't need to open this all the way. There's no need for it. What you're gonna do then is use some kindling. Uh, I've got birch bark. You can use whatever you want. Stay away from woods like cedar and tamarack. They just burn super, super hot. So you're just gonna, and you're, you're starting small, remember? So you're just putting a little bit of kindling in here the bottom and then and you know however you want to build the fire there's not necessarily a particular way 
We do have instructions on our website on what we recommend, but it can be done multiple ways. So go ahead and put your kindling in there. After you've got your kindling in your stove, go ahead and light it. Now to increase the draft in the stove, you don't want to keep your door all the way open. Shut your door just a little bit and you're going to get you're going to get a lot more draft coming into the stove. And you, again, you don't want to keep your door open all the way either the whole time because otherwise one you're going to lose heat and two you're just going to cook the stove. Now that, now that the fire's going, you're gonna wanna shut your ash pan door. You don't wanna keep that open for an excessive amount of time. It'll overheat your stove. This is very important. Go ahead and shut that. Now, you can keep your, your main door open for a little longer, just till it gets going. And the reason for this is because your ash pan is located underneath your fire. Your door is located in front of your fire. When you have oxygen entering from the bottom, you're essentially torching your wood and, and overheating the inside of the stove for a long period of time. Once your fire gets going, now it's going good, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna shut my door. I'm gonna leave my, my draft control lever open until it gets going for a little while. Now, one way to tell when your fire is going like hot compared to cold is you're gonna look at the smoke. If you've got dark smoke, that's a cold fire. The cleanest fire is the hottest, burning most efficient fire. So if you, sh you should almost, almost have like a fog or like a, a light smoke, but not a big black mist of smoke. This is gonna be um, black because we just started the stove up. So I would give this like probably 10 to 15 minutes, check on it periodically as you're, as you're watching your stove. If it's going really, really good, go ahead and turn your draft control lever probably to about medium. Okay, it's been about five minutes. We're back. As you can see, the smoke is pretty much dissipated. So now that your smoke is dissipated, so you're burning at a higher temperature. So what, what's happening is inside your firebox, we're going to open the door. As we do this, obviously we're entering oxygen into the fire chamber. It's gonna get a little dark, but we're gonna go ahead and open. You can see your fire's burning nice and hot. It's burning good in there. So then you put the rest of your pile in there and add the rest of your, your wood. Go ahead and shut your door. Now, what you're gonna do is you're going to turn your lever to halfway, three quarter to halfway, depending on how it's burning. You can, again, you can watch that from the smoke. If the smoke's super dark, maybe add a little more, more air, so that way it increases the temperature of the fire. You're getting a hotter fire, you're getting a cleaner burn. So I'm just gonna reduce it to half because I know that I've got a good fire in there. I know I've got good, clean smoke. I have reduced the draft, so I'm gonna get a little bit of darker smoke at first. It will clear up as the fire continues to build. Okay, it's been about another five minutes. As you can see, the smoke has dissipated again, pretty much from the chimney. So what we're gonna do now, the first thing we did is went from 100% all the way open, the lever is all the way up. Now, then we went to 75%, which is where the lever is at now. So the slightest adjustment in this lever makes quite a difference. So we're going to go ahead and reduce it to 25%. So what you're going to do is reduce probably about right there, about 25%. Now this, this might fluctuate a little bit. You might have to be a little bit more here, a little bit more here, but about 25%, that'd be good. And now you're going to keep it at 25% for the rest of the burn. What I mean by that is all the coals, everything has burned down and out of this. What that's going to do is it's going to allow the stove to get up to that temp and then to uh, essentially 
decrease in temperature. So that sucks. So allow your stove when it's at 25% to burn to completion. So all of your hot coals are burned out. The reason for doing this is to get your stove up to temp and then to reduce the heat all the way down so the steel can stress release. Now on your top here, you're seeing smoke. The smoke is coming from any excess oils, uh, the fumes from your paint. That's the point, that's the whole process of doing this is to cure the, the paint to the stove to remove any excess oils, fumes and such forth. So when you get it in your sauna and it's installed, one, it doesn't stink, and two, it's cured properly. So the paint is gonna last and the stove is gonna, is gonna last also. So now that our Kuma sauna stove is at 25%, we're gonna go ahead and let it burn out completely. We'll see you in about three hours. Okay, it's been about an hour and a half. The fire has completely died out. Uh, you're not imagining things. We did switch out the door to one with uh, an optional glass window. We wanted to show people the difference. Uh, Tanner's gonna touch on a few things right now. Okay, so the fire's completely died out and we've ran that at 25 to 30 percent the whole time uh, fluctuating just you know just so it burns good as you can see the fire is completely dead um, there's no more live coals in there the stove is the stove is able to cool and then what we're going to do on the next burn is go ahead and add more wood allow it to get to a little higher temperature and then um, the paint can cure at a higher temperature so you'll, you'll notice when you have a glass window, again, a glass window is optional, you can get a regular window. There's gonna be a little gap here all the way at the top. And what that gap does is it acts as an air wash system. So air is entering in. It, what, basically what it does is it creates an airflow around the glass. It keeps the glass clean when the fire is going. So you don't get a bunch of soot, um, ash kind of build up on your glass window. Lamp of manufacturing back here again. Uh, it's the next day. We did switch out the glass window for uh, our standard door. The glass window was an option. Uh, today, we're gonna do both the medium burn and the large burn, and uh, Tanner will take it away now. So all you're really gonna do is load a little bit more firewood into the firebox. Again, we've allowed the fire to completely die out, the, cool, the stove to cool down. So we're starting with the cold stove. Uh, we're essentially starting from scratch. So again, what you're gonna do, go ahead and open your lever all the way to the up position. That's gonna open your draft flap all the way open, allowing maximum uh, draft. Then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna open your ash pan door again. You're really only gonna open it about a crack. What this does is it allows for extra draft to get into that firebox for easy of starting. Now it's very, very, very important. Once your fire is established, once it gets going, it usually takes one to five minutes max, you need to shut that ash pan door. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and light the stove. I put my kindling in, some smaller some, some smaller wood. Again, this is the medium burn, so we're gonna actually run this a little, a little hotter just to get that temperature up, just to cure the paint at a little higher temperature. Go ahead and start. And then what I do is just kind of shut my door just a little bit, it allows that extra draft to get in, to get into the stove. And once your fire is established, you can actually see through this window here. If you have a window, that's one of the advantages of that. You can monitor your fire very easily. Once your fire gets established, again, you wanna make sure you shut that ash pan door. So one to five minutes, no longer than that. See the smoke starting to come out of the chimney. And this process will be very similar to the small fire and the large fire. Um, you can monitor your, your heat control um, as far as where the established fire is by watching your smoke. If you've got dark black smoke, it's cold. If you've got nice like a fog white, you've got a good established fire. Okay, so now that our fire has been established, you can see inside the firebox here, by either opening so you can see it's got a good roar you're going to go ahead and you're going to shut your ash pan door now it's only been about two minutes not even i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to shut my ash pan door i'm going to leave my door open just for another second you can see the top of the stove here um you can see the you know the the smoke's coming out quite a bit faster so the draft's going in there really good 
Uh, you've got a good fire going in there. I'm just gonna leave the door open for another second just so that I can really get going. Um, and then once it gets going, I'm gonna go ahead and shut my door. So now that I can observe the fire, I can see it's going pretty really well. Uh, it's been like 30 seconds from when I just said that. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna shut my door. I'm gonna leave my, my lever control at full until the fire is going really good. And what I mean by that is I've, my smoke has dissipated to almost a white um, or a kind of a clear smoke. And then I'm gonna go ahead and reduce. Okay, it's been about five minutes. Uh, now we're gonna add some additional wood to the fire. So you're just gonna go ahead and open your fire door. You wanna open this slowly. Don't just wag it right open. Uh, the smoke flap is there to prevent um, smoke from coming at you, but do it nice and slow here. Sauna is a beautiful thing. Go ahead and shut your door. You're gonna let that go for about another two to three, maybe five minutes. Let that fire establish just because you put new firewood in there. And then we're gonna go ahead and reduce. So it's been about 10 minutes now. What we're gonna do now that the fire is established, we're gonna go ahead and reduce draft. What this will do is allow the stove to build heat. Now, what I mean by that is when you're when your draft lever is all the way open, all you're doing is sending that smoke up and out the top of the pipe, okay? So you have to reduce draft in order to build heat. So go ahead, we're just gonna turn this to about halfway, and we're gonna leave it there for the rest of the burn. Okay, it's been about two and a half hours now. Uh, we're gonna do our final burn, which is gonna be the largest load, Tanner takeover. So we're just gonna do the same process as we did on the small and the medium load. Go ahead and fill your uh, your hot box there with kindling, small wood. We're gonna get that up and going, and then we're gonna go ahead and load our firewood into uh, the fire chamber. So you can see you open oh, the I ash pan door slightly. So I, yep, I open the ash pan again, just like on the small load and the medium load. Just gonna shut that door briefly, just because we're getting quite a bit of draft coming out of there. Again, I'm only gonna leave my ash pan door open for a max of two minutes. Let that fire get going, and then I'm gonna go ahead and shut my ash pan door. You don't wanna leave it open any longer than that you could cause overheating with the stove so now that you can see my fire is going I mean it's only been about 30 seconds it depends on the dryness of your wood we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna shut our ash pan door we're gonna leave our main door open just for another second just to let that kindling and uh, the small pieces of wood get up and get uh, get burning really good and then we'll go ahead and shut that and then we're going to idle it down to about 75% so now that our fire is going, we're gonna go ahead and shut our door. Um, if you're in the hot room, if you're if you're running the sauna uh, and you're starting the fire, you don't wanna keep the door open. You'd only do this during the uh, curing process. So don't keep the door open if you're in the hot room, otherwise you'll smoke yourself out. So now that the fire is going, we're gonna go ahead and idle it down to about 75%, which is about three quarters of the way down. So just go ahead and take your shaft, your lever here, and just idle it down to about 75%. We're gonna leave that for about 10 to 15 minutes until our smoke goes clear, and then we'll go ahead and idle it down, probably about half, and we'll load our wood. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. Now Tanner's gonna load the rest of the wood. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and open our door. Slowly. Again, if you're in your sauna, don't open your door um, like this. This is only for outdoor use. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna load our firewood. Now you're gonna to wanna to leave it at full idle 
for a couple minutes because you need that fire to get back up up there. The reason why is because you just added new wood, get her up to temp, and then what we're gonna do is idle it down. Okay, it's been about another 10 minutes now. We're gonna go ahead and uh, dial the stove down. We're just gonna go ahead and pull our lever. This has been all the way open, so we're just gonna go ahead and bring it down to about half. Again, this is going to allow the stove to build the heat that it needs to. So this is the last burn, the final burn. What you're gonna wanna do is allow this to burn for probably about three and a half, four hours it's gonna take to fully burn this uh, cycle of wood. You want, the, you want the stove to completely cool down. After this, remove any ash um, that's in the stove and then go ahead and, and do your installation and you're good to go.